Mama, may I present Matthew Crawley and Mrs. Crawley, my mother, Lady Grantham? What should we call each other? Well, we could always start with Mrs. Crawley and Lady Grantham. Come into the drawing room and we can make all the proper introductions. Thank you, guys. Do you think you'll enjoy village life? It'll be very quiet after life in the city. Even Manchester. I'm sure I'll find something to keep me busy. You might like the hospital. What sort of hospital is it? How many beds? Well, it, it, it's rarely a hospital. Well, don't let Dr. Clarkson hear you. He thinks it's second only to St. Thomas's. It's a cottage hospital, of course, but quite well equipped. Who pays for it? Oh, good. Let's talk about money. My father gave the building and an endowment to run it. In a way, he set up his own memorial. But how splendid. And Mr. Lloyd George's new insurance measures will help. Please don't speak that man's name. We are about to eat. But I'm afraid the good doctor and I did not see eye to eye. Oh, you amaze me. He's treating one of your tenants, John Drake, for dropsy, but seems reluctant to embrace some of the newer treatments. You know, Drake is a good man and far too young to die, but I suppose the doctor knows his business. Not as well as Mrs. Crawley, apparently. Mrs. Drake, the choice is simple. If your husband endures this procedure, he may live. If not, he will die. Please, please, no, let me pass. I must see the doctor. At once. Your ladyship. Just as I thought. Dr. Clarkson. Tell me you will not permit this amateur to influence your professional opinion. Amateur? My dear woman, do not let them bully you. They'll not disturb the peace of your husband's last hours, not if I can help it. But that's just it, my lady. I don't want them to be his last hours. Not if there's a chance. Please, Doctor, do what you must. As president of this hospital, I feel I must... Twelve. Tell you, I shall bring this to the attention of the board. You're doing very well. Have you no pity? Adrenaline. Quickly, quickly. His heart stopped. Oh. Ready? Mm-hmm. Yes. the new fashions. Shorter skirts, looser cuts. The old clothes were all very well if one spent the day on a chaise long, but if one wants to get anything done, the new clothes are much better. Yeah, I'll stick to the chaise long. But, Granny, you don't really want things to go back to the way they were, surely? Of course I do, and as quickly as possible. Matthew's making such progress. I think so. But are we doing enough for him, for all of them, when it comes to rehabilitation? They're going to have to face a very different world after the war. I agree. But they'll all be leaving Downton soon. Leaving? Well, Turkey's about to capitulate and Roberts' Vittoria Veneto will finish Austria, so it's only a matter of weeks, even days, before it's over. 
We wouldn't send anyone home too soon, of course, but sometime in the new year, we will have our house back. So you want it just to be a private house again? Oh, shouldn't she? Or would you like to abolish private houses? Well, that life of changing clothes and killing things and eating them, do you really want it again? Wouldn't you rather Downton was useful? Oh, but it, the house is useful. We provide employment and... Oh, please. Let me look into keeping it open as a centre of recovery. I could run it. The house could be so much more than it was before. What about you, Wellesley? Are you looking forward to this brave new world of Mrs Crawley's imaginings? I'm glad of my job, my lady. And I should very much like to hold on to it, with Mrs Crawley's permission. Servants are always far more conservative than their employers. Everyone knows that. Then I must be the exception that proves the rule. The war may be at an end, but the upheaval is only beginning. Oh, how right you are. That is why Downton Abbey still has such an important role to play. Oh, dear me. There's so much to be done. When you think of all the children laid up with the disease... But they're making such advances now, aren't they? Now, could we talk about the lecture programme oh, for Downton? We, we must, we must. If only I wasn't haunted by those women whose jobs will be snatched from them when the boys come home. But we have to find work for our heroes, don't we? That must be our priority, mm. however hard that might sound. Mm. As you say. And what about those wretched refugees? What will become of them? Ah, uh, now you've struck a chord. Have I really? Oh, thank heaven. What do you mean? Mm, nothing. Only the thought of those poor men and women flung across Europe, far from their homelands, and so much in need of your help. My help? Why do you say that? When it comes to helping refugees, your experience renders your value beyond price. One of the organisers said those words. Which organiser? I forget. But what about running Downton? I can't do both. Well, I suppose you must decide what is more important. Exercise classes and lectures on pottery or helping men and women build a new life. I must go, but I will think about it. This was very good. It was. It really was. <laughs> you don't sound so surprised. I am surprised. I owe Ethel an apology. I've underestimated her. <laughs> I sometimes wonder if I should learn to cook. Why? You never know. It might come in handy one day. And I've got to do something. What did you say to that editor who wanted you to write for him? I haven't said anything yet. It's probably too late now, anyway. Matthew tells me Robert was against it. What difference does that make? Oh, really, my dear? Shh. We're all family. I'm not letting the side down. I'm just saying that Robert frequently makes decisions based on values that have no relevance anymore. Do you think <coughs> I should do it? I wouldn't countermand your father. Then why bring it up? Well, I do, and so does Matthew. And so does Matthew what? What else has Matthew decided for my family? Robert? Don't worry. I don't need to be fed. We're going, all of you, now. What are you talking about? Do you know who has prepared this luncheon for you? Yes, Ethel, our former housemaid. Who bore a bastard child. What? Robert, Ethel has rebuilt her life. Has she? Do you know what she has built it into? What do you mean? I think Cousin Robert is referring to Ethel's work as a prostitute. Well, of course, you know, these days servants are very hard to find. I don't think you understand the difficulty she's had to face. I couldn't care less how she earns her living. Good luck to her. What I care about is that you have exposed my family to scandal. But who would know? I can't tell you how people find out these things, but they do. Your gardener, your kitchen maid, you... I suppose she has an appropriate costume for every activity. We're leaving. Is this because of me, my lord? No, it's because of his lordship and we're not leaving. Is that a Charlotte Russe? How delicious. I hope it's tasty, my lady. Mrs Patmore gave me some help. I'm glad to know that Mrs Patmore has a good heart and does not judge. Is anyone coming? It seems a pity to miss such a good pudding.
Did you enjoy the concert? I did. It was a great treat to hear Melbourne in person. Mm. And the evening, generally? You mean, did I find it hard to see Mary come alive again? Yes, I did, I confess it. But I don't think my feelings are at all defensible. They're defensible to me. But it's immoral to react in such a jealous and selfish way. <laughs> if we only had moral thoughts, what would the poor churchman find to do? I'm fond of Mary. I love her. I don't want her to be alone and unhappy. It makes no sense, even to me. I don't criticise either you or her. But I hope you find a way to make friends with the world again. Do you enjoy weddings? Yes. But I'm not going to that one. I'd feel like the wicked fairy at the christening of Sleeping Beauty. Why would Larry Gray want you to be there? I mean, you of all people. I'm sure he doesn't. Dickie must have persuaded them to ask me. But I doubt that. He wouldn't want to subject you to more insults. Well, who then? I'd say this is the work of Miss Cruikshank. She's the one always making a show of friendship. Why don't I pay a call on her, see if I can winkle out the truth? I'm sorry I showed it to you now. Oh, don't be, don't be. Are things going well in my former kingdom? Cora is settling in. I know it must feel awkward. Oh, no. I'm yesterday, she's tomorrow. That's the way it is. You must be feeling very hurt. Well, uh, the fact is, I might as well be honest. I am angry at the way I have been treated. I don't blame you. While angry, I say things some people find hard to forgive. So I have decided to go away. I'd rather vent my rage on the death of her and return when I've regained control of my tongue. Your self-knowledge is an example to us all. You don't think I'm wrong? I'd say the last thing you need at this stage in your life is to quarrel with your son and daughter-in-law. Precisely. But don't fear, I'll call on Miss Cruikshank before I leave. I suspect she's quite a tough nut. And I'm quite a tough nut cracker. <laughs> <laughs>